Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with the interview series presented by WFPK at WFPK.org. Consequence of Sound and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thank you so much for checking out the episode, finding your way to the series. You know the drill. If you like what you uh, see here, hit that subscribe button. We put out brand new interviews every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and would love to keep you along for the journey. I'm Kyle Meredith, and today I'm going to be talking with uh, Will Butler. He's back with his second solo record. It is called Generations. Of course, you know Will is one of the founders of Arcade Fire. Uh, it is so good to see you again. How are you, bud? Doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing okay here, man. So first off, congratulations on Generations. What a insanely catchy album. Um, <laughs> one that will get stuck. I mean, the loops I've had in my head for some of these songs. <laughs> <laughs> it would drive a person insane if they weren't so good songs. Uh, such good songs. So uh, first off, congratulations on this. Oh, thank yeah, thank you. Yeah. I, I've heard you... Um, I'll, I'll jump right into the deep end, if you don't mind, because I know there's sort of a specific thought that kind of weaves throughout this record. Uh, what I've heard you talk about is uh, uh, really thinking about your place in American history and the present. So I, I figure it's important to ask why that is. Why, why are you asking that specifically? I mean, just on a very basic level, I think we all have to ask that question at some point it's like the it's like the coming of age novel except it's like the coming into adulthood Mm -hmm. moment that one probably ought to have at some point in their life um you don't have to make a record about it (laughs) but you do have to like think about it at some point just like what like my god how did we get here where am i going uh and then yeah i mean it's just It's been a chaotic five years in the world and kind of piecing together the power dynamics and like even just what is actually going on. It takes a lot of brain power and it, I mean, it's, it kind of just came out in the music. Like I've always tried to write music both here and in Arcade Fire that like emerges from like the world that I'm in. And yeah, it's been like, even before Trump, it's been a kind of a, a a rough half decade in the world. And it's, it's mostly been driven by what's going on in the world. Like I didn't have any massive life changes. I mean, I had, I have three kids now. I used to have one kid, but it, it, uh, that always does, promote some introspection but it's mostly just like wow things are getting rough do i what do i do what do i do i don't know what should i do i don't know what do i do what's going on (laughs) that's and you're right i mean that seems to be what we're all asking ourselves i mean uh, you know and i don't know if you find that you have the answers you know because you know for me uh you know you speak out when you feel the passion to speak out you know you march when you need to march you take care of your family when you need to take care of your family, and you hope for the best at the end point. I mean, do you find that you there there are any resolutions when you put pen to paper, you know, chord to progression? No, I mean that's essentially that's essentially the the tension. That's the whole record where it's like all the lyrics are I don't know, I don't know anything, I don't know what to do, I don't know what I don't know, I don't know, I I don't want to think about this anymore. Why do I have to think about this? Oh God! But I really do have to think about this. Uh, and then the music is is in tension with that because the music by its nature is so embodied and so communal and so even though it's going to be a long time before we can play shows but it still is of that spirit where mm. it's it's it is creative and affirming in and of itself and and yeah I think I think in terms of concrete answers that are, don't appear anywhere on the record, it is that. It is like showing up for your people, um, which, you know, it's a thorny year for that. Um, and it's it's been heartening to see people showing up for their people. But it's it's also been like we're in the middle of a pandemic, so it's also like more complicated than mm. one would hope. But yeah, I mean, that's, that is... That's the only sure answer. That maybe there's some other answers. Maybe there's some things we can do. But it it is like, like okay, let's like 
let's start let's get with our neighbors and with the people in our cities and with the people in our county and with the people in our state and you know that's that is that right, s- spiral right. out right well that uh, th- that takes care of the present part you know and when you talk about your place in american history <clears throat> i mean that's um I guess that opens up a little bit to where the title comes into with generations, because I don't know if you could speak to that, but, but, uh, I mean, your, your family, I mean, we're all, as they say, we're all immigrants, uh, and we are, but I guess you have a closer tie to that, uh, throughout your family. Uh, is that what you're speaking to? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, the record doesn't come from this, but it's kind of it's kind of this where i my wife got like the two week ancestry.com preview like seven years ago she's like oh i'm just gonna do this it's free like i see the commercial every single time i turn on any device (laughs) and and she's jewish and so most of her family like a lot of them came after world war ii and then there was a chunk that came in like the 1920s then there was a chunk that came in like 1905 and that's all of their recorded history. I mean, they have names and they know that they were in like this part of the Russian empire. And maybe if you go to this Ukrainian village, they haven't burned down the Jewish records, but maybe they have. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so, so her documented history, which like is not the end all be all, but like goes back to the beginning of the 20th century. And then I was like, and then for me, it's like clicking. It's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then it's this guy, 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 and then it's this guy. And it's all so documented. Mm-hmm. And so it's all so knowable. And it's all so, some of it's just, just so goddamn clear. I mean, like, just like the first butler came to. Massachusetts in 1630 (laughs) and they've just been Yankees they've been on like three different islands in New England for like 300 years Uh and and there's something to that that that's really beautiful and there's something to that that's very thorny Mm -hmm. and and yeah my 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 one grandpa my mom's dad was a musician he was like a famous musician he was in the name of Alvino Ray but he was born Alvin McBurney, changed his name to Alvino Ray to because Alvin McBurney's a terrible name. <laughs> no offense to the Alvin McBurney's out there. But he changed it to Alvino Ray for showbiz. Uh-huh. And he got famous playing the electric guitar. He was like the one of the very first electric guitar players. But but back the first electric guitars were Hawaiian guitars. So he was a man named Alvin McBurney who changed his name to Alvino Ray playing an electric Hawaiian guitar, playing jazz music on electric Hawaiian guitar in America as a white dude Uh (laughs) it's thorny and like not all of that is it's like problematic in the like you have to think about the pieces it's not like feeling guilty though there are elements of history that i don't mind us feeling guilty about but it is like oh that is literally where i come from Mm -hmm. so what what does that mean and my mom's mom's dad decided to be a musician in the 1880s he was like a poor mormon kid son of homesteaders his parents had been driven by religious violence outside of the bounds of america and they went to go live in the (laughs) desert in utah and he decided to be a musician and that that is pretty explicitly why i'm a musician that's like he decided to be a musician his kids he made his kids be musicians their kids were musicians their kids were musicians were me and my brother are musicians Mm. so it's like very concretely my life and my success is derived from decisions made in the 19th century and some of that like being a musician is very beautiful like being a musician from generations of musicians is there's nothing wrong with that it's like glorious but if we're gonna concede that decisions made in the late 19th century have impacted my life today, there are many, many, many other decisions that date back to the 19th century and before that have impacted how I'm living today. And like, how how do I how do I deal with that? And not not everyone has to be a historian. Not everyone has to be like like looking back there. It doesn't. But I I am. Like that's, Mm -hmm. I'm always drawn to it. I'm always drawn to just like, where did I come from? What is the antecedent? What is not the root cause, but like, what are some of the currents of mystery that have brought us to this moment? 
Um, and so that, you know, not everyone has to do that, but that's just where my brain always goes. It's like, it's just like a mental tick. Like, where did this come from? Where are we going? Yeah. Well, thinking it's like you're a good musician, I, I guess is <laughs> what I should point out. Because <laughs> that's not a given, even with the history, but that that is a beautiful way to look at it. There is, um, you know, maybe I'll start with the, uh, the bottom up on this record too, because you've got this song that uh, closes out the album called Fine that, you know, it's very different from the rest of the record. And, and yeah. you know, uh, viewer, listener, if you haven't heard this, you know, it's a great dance indie rock record kind of, you know. Um, but but right at the end of it, you pull out what, to me, when I first heard it was like, my first thought was schoolhouse rock. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if you, like, yeah. you know, we're about the same age. If you grew up with schoolhouse rock, it's like, it's not exactly that, but that's what it reminded me of. But this is you sort of tracing, like, actual U.S. history in a way, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it starts off with George Washington and his slaves, and it co- then it goes to the present day. <laughs> like, it's trying to do a lot. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it is, it's like half, it's like a third Schoolhouse Rock. It's like a third Randy Newman. It's, it's kind of trying to have the spirit of, like, high period Kanye, Mm-hmm. Of just trying to do everything and kind of being an idiot and kind of being an asshole, but like trying to just lay it all out in a way that is comprehensive. Whereas, and like, there's such, like in hip hop, there's like such a beautiful whole genres of like how I made my money. Mm-hmm. And like, this is how I made my money. And, and, my story of that is like, well, my grandpa was a small businessman. <laughs> and and I don't think there's a... That's a horrible thing to talk about in a song. <laughs> that's like a horrible thing for even like a person to bring up. This is just like, like, this is, as a white person, this is where my power derives from. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's horrible. It's like, like... It's so uninspiring to hear not an underdog describe what's going on. And I, and part of this, that's not the entire song, but part of the song is like trying to do that in like a, in a crass way with like a schoolhouse rock beat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at least coming out in the, the, in the era of Hamilton, you know, it's not like it doesn't <laughs> make sense, which... You know, just uh, by pure chance. I mean, uh, I'm talking with Leslie Odom Jr. right after this. You know, who played Aaron oh, wow. Burr, and it's, yeah. so that's <laughs> amazing. It's like there's something going on here in the universe. At least for me, as the listener, you know, that really, really works. You know, and the yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting how that that comes out. I, I do want to pull up your wife a little bit here because she herself works in in government to a certain degree, right? Uh, well, she's been working. She's just she's been fundraising and organizing around um, state legislative races mm-hmm. this year, and she's done it. Yeah, she's done it for a lot of races, um, um, and she's also on the record. She also plays keyboards and sings on the record. But uh, yeah, my my wife Jenny, she, particularly this year, we've been focused. She's been focused, and I've been like, I've uh, been like helping um, with the the state legislative race in Arizona. Like mm-hmm. there's a real chance that the Democrats could take one of the houses of the state government, um, which I could like talk about for like hours. But essentially, all of the state government stuff is both a bulwark against the horrible things that a federal government might do, and it's also a can be a very fertile breeding ground for good ideas, and can be like a horrible idea breeding ground for ideas. Like the Arizona legislature were the pioneers of the show me your papers law of like the super racist, like we're Mm going to be even more racist than anyone else. And they, you know, state laws have that power and it'd be, it'd be very inspiring to see Arizona not choose to be super racist because the the state is full of like beautiful people of all kinds. So (laughs) like it, it should have a, should have a legislature and laws that reflect that. Um, Yeah. But yeah, so so that's that's what I'm getting. You know, here we have a song like "Fine" and and you know, sort of what you're thinking about throughout this record, uh, and and then outside of the music, like you're still surrounded by this, and to every degree, we're all still surrounded by this. But it seems like, I mean, I'm trying to say this where it doesn't sound opportunistic, but what a perfect time for you to re- release this record. 
because I mean, it really does seem like your life is just completely involved, even more so than most of us, I think, with what's going on uh, around here. And I guess I'm I, I'm a little like surprised or, or curious, like when you're writing these songs, what keeps you going full on political record? Because it, this isn't this isn't a full on political record. I mean, there, there are these yeah. moments in there, but it's not that. Is, is that something that you find that you purposely separate? No, I mean, it kind of just comes out how it comes out. Like, it's kind of mysterious. Like, like it could have been a record of love songs if love songs had come out. But it's just like what, like, you know, I've I've just been thinking about history so much. So, like, when I sat at the piano, I was like, I guess I'm going to write about George Washington now. <laughs> or <laughs> just like, does. Or it's just on your brain. So you're like, it's just like, I don't know what's happening you're just like responding to the news like if i've been very you know we've most of us have been pretty involved with the news the last couple of years but i've been very involved and it just comes out because it's what's on your mind but right. it is it is in some sense mysterious and uncontrollable the writing and like i think that it i think it's even it's not possible for me but i in the abstract it's possible to write music that's very div- that's that it's completely transcendent that's like super divorced from yeah, the, um, the nitty-gritty of the world not it, it never can be totally but it but anyway i it just to me it's always like what's on my brain and then it comes out in the music and you're like oh okay and that's that's what it is and that's yeah. also why it's not a super political record that's why it's not an idols record which is amazing but they're them it's like it's like a clash record it's like uh oh, we're gonna talk about this we're talking about this and it and it isn't that for me because even with all of the news and all of the of the thought and all of the work that's happening, it's still not everything. Right, and that's good. That's healthy. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. We'll see. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll bring up um. So my favorite song on here, I do believe, uh, is "Promised." Uh, "Promised" that you know the first time I listened to it, it was in the car. You know, and and I had it on, and suddenly it comes on. First time I hear it, I'm the guy dancing at the stoplights. Yeah. You know, not caring <laughs> yes. about everybody else around me. Um, just a, a broad question. Tell me about that song because again, I've just kind of fallen in love with the feel of it, with the groove of it. You know, I'm already singing the hook even before I'm aware of what the song is actually saying. Yeah, that's and that's very much how I experience music. It's I I like experience, and I'm like, what's what's going on? Like every the breath you take is about what now? <laughs> uh, but yeah, that that song is like truly was a groove. Like it was a groove that that me and because this record is very much a band record with my touring band, um, my drummer Miles and my sister in law Julie. Particularly the three of us like laid down beds, and this was just a groove. It was like this is a cool groove, and like this is you know it was like chords and a feel. And we just played it. I, we just played it for a long time. It was one of the last songs. The lyrics weren't written or anything. And I was like, let's just like play this for a long time. And I'm going to cut this together because I know that this is something. Like it feels right. And like Miles was, Miles was just really feeling it because it's not. Anyway, I could I could talk about it forever. But yeah, it's it's trying to be that. It's trying to be a. It's got a little bit of LCD sound system in its bones. Like it's a little bit of just like yeah, trying to get you to dance at the stoplight, and. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm glad success. it comes across. Such, I'm glad it comes across that way. <laughs> yeah, total success. I, I think in another interview, it, it may have been the Stereo Gum, um, you know, album write up. Uh, you said there could be a jammier version even to come. Did you record more of that song, a different versions, or what? What are you talking about there? Yeah, so we yeah we just jammed on it. We like played it on a loop. Like I didn't even have a structure. This, there was like the strings or the chorus and the whole thing. The bass is the whole thing this whole way and. Uh, and yeah, there is something like because it kind of starts dramatically on the record, but there's also a way that you just like it's just the groove, do 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 like forever, right. and it kind of picks up and like stuff enters because that's how we played it and it felt really good. But then it was that thing where records are different than playing it, and just like listening back didn't exactly have the magic of the room, so you had to like, you know, I picked like a bit of the faster bits because it's like, oh yeah, this is like feels like you want to dance like it needs to be just it needs to be the fast bits that we played even though the slow bits are really satisfying but it doesn't quite work in this context so yeah so there's a 12 inch <laughs> version somewhere 
somewhere percolating. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's right, right on this computer behind behind you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look forward to that. The the multiple voices on here. Uh, how is it that you? I mean, do you 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 just said a minute ago this is sort of like a band record uh, in a lot of ways. But writing for multiple voices, like there is the call and repeat moments. There is the narration weaving. Like, does that come through band writing, or is that something that you're able to kind of see as you're writing the song? Yeah, I mean, that's just like fundamentally I'm a theater kid from high school, and I can only think in dramatic terms, and I can only think in like characters on a stage. And if, and, and yeah, and I think, I think every songwriter makes a persona when they're performing and when they're writing and like i mean bruce springsteen talks about it all the time he's like i'm a charlatan it's all pretend but it but but people do that and to me that persona kind of only makes sense with other people on the stage it kind of only feels human when there's other voices and some of that is just listening to so much motown as in like my teens and 20s like so much Smokey robinson and the miracles where they just sound it's just like a gang of humans like the most wildly talented humans you've ever heard but you still like get that sense of like these are humans in a room and to me that's that's the only way most of the time that a lot of songs make sense is if i'm not alone in this world if i'm like talking with someone because it's hard to me sometimes to like talk to a person in headphones like Mm -hmm. talk to like an imaginary listener or talk to myself it's like easier to like talk to these to this greek chorus that follows me around everywhere <laughs> but you get that like in surrender uh you know the, the first uh, the radio single or whatever like i can immediately see the conversation happening you know like I, and i still you know uh, dozens of listens into this song like when i'm hearing it you know the call I, like i'm imagining like i don't know you know I, maybe so it's yeah. you know th- th- those little moments right here. It's in, in like sometimes it's like the shrug off thing, and you know it's it's really like the theatrical part. I hadn't actually considered, especially when you get a song like that, which is this again this catchy little pop song and everything. But there is a lot of theatricness happening within that. Yeah, and like and like on Bethlehem, it's like it's just this. It's just a rant. The whole song's a rant. It's like Jesus Christ. This is the end times. Like, what's going on? And then there's the bridge in the middle where the other voices, where the women are like, I don't know, man, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe, maybe yes, but also we're just here together. But you can keep ranting. It's okay if you keep ranting. But you know that your rant isn't exactly reflective of reality either. And then it, and then it's like, okay, that that's actually the emotion. Like, the emotion isn't, I'm ranting into the void. The emotion is I'm ranting in the presence of people that love me and mm-hmm. that like we are then going to like figure out what to do next. And that that what to do next is in the next act which is not part of the record. <laughs> but it is but like to me it's it's there where it's like we're here we're together keep ranting if you need to. And then and then we'll do the next thing. <laughs> then we'll get there. That yeah. that song's actually a nice also um, lead in or, or, or the, the weave we were talking about earlier to not going to die too because there is that sense of the 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 overreacting the you know uh, the the fear being thrown at you a little bit you know you talk about the world's going to end and then you have and not going to die the way people are saying uh, like oh be scared of everyone be scared of everyone especially who doesn't look like you and you're like what I, I mean yeah. I love I really do love that you took that angle on that one yeah and it's I also think. Like when we name our fears, we also make them real. So even when we're being like, stop saying that like this guy's going to kill me. Like stop saying that like my freaking neighbors, you know, I live in, I, I, there was like a rumor that the neighborhood I lived in, like, like, like two of the uh, 9-11 bombers lived here when they were studying stuff. And it's completely false. It's completely 100% false. But like that was like what the my neighbors told me when I moved in. Like, did you know? Because it's we're in like a big Bangladeshi Muslim neighborhood. Yeah. And it's like, quit saying that my neighbors are going to kill me. Like, are you like, why? Like, why do you why do you, do you insist on that? And yet it's the way the brain works by someone saying like this guy's going to kill you you kind of picture it for a second and it works and you're like no don't 
it's not true. It's not, you know, this is, you know, here I am ranting again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, again, I mean, the record just just takes so many different angles, uh, unexpected angles, you know, from the narration, uh, musically, again, it's a lot of fun. So, you know, what you've done is is no small feats. And, you know, and for this just to be, like, it doesn't feel like a side project. Like, you know, and I think that's what people wonder, like, you know, when when Policy came out in 2015, you know, you you sort of go, okay, here's the solo record. What's it going to mean? There's something about generations, I guess, to me that makes it real. You know, that makes it feel a little bit more real. And it probably doesn't feel like that to you because you're the person in it. I mean, whether it's this or Arcade Fire, I mean, you're just you're writing the songs, right? Yeah. And it's but that that is essentially how it it feels to me as well, where policy was more like scattering the bread upon the waters. It's just like, oh, I'm going to put this here partly because as is in this record, I can only I only operate on conversation. Mm-hmm. So like with, with policy, it was like, I have to say something in order to hear something back, in order to say something, in order to hear something back, in order to say something. And I didn't want to think too long about what I wanted to say with policy. And then now that I'm like friends with everybody, now I'm like, okay, I'm thinking about what I want to say. And it you can still there's like really funny jokes and really great stuff that comes out of not thinking about it too much there's like really great meals that you just like grab the food at the market and make it really fast and it's the best meal you've ever had but there's also something to be said for like really thinking through what you're doing and why you're doing it and and generations is much more that yeah yeah i love the way it worked out uh the way it sounds i'll hit a couple things outside of the album too uh what is stereophonic Oh, that's a that's a really awesome play that I'm working on um, by this playwright playwright David Adjumi, and it's about uh, it's basically a band in a studio, and he he through a friend I I never knew him but through a friend of a friend he was like you want to write some songs like it's not really a musical, this is a play about people in a studio, and so it's like them working on the song so the songs like cycle back through. And it, he's he's a, a straight up genius. Um, he yeah the the play it's like just insanely captures actually what it's like to be in a studio under the pressure and just being like, is this worth it? What are we doing? This is great. This is terrible. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's, it was supposed to be on Broadway. Like there's one arts theater on Broadway. It was going to be like in the tiniest theater, but it was literally going to be on Broadway. This fall i think it was supposed to premiere like next month and now it'll it'll happen it will happen but i mean it'll be another year it'll be like 2022 or something like that sure yeah Um, but no that was just like a a bolt from the blue it was like you want to do this thing i was like oh yeah i'll meet with this guy and he's a genius and you're like oh okay oh i'm that this is not random this is like really exciting (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, it's Broadway. I mean, you know, not everybody gets the chance. I mean, you you know, even if it's the tiniest theater, you're you're writing for Broadway. That's got to be, yeah, yeah. And, and it's it's second stage of the producers, and it's like so goddamn legit and amazing. And like we, you know, it was going to be in L.A. and like we were doing workshops, and it was it was yeah, super like a really amazing director. And you're just like, oh, this is just such an education to see people working at the top of their craft and like working together in a different way. It was, it was very inspiring. Continues now, uh, to be inspiring. Just stop Mahas. <laughs> yeah. A- am I going to hear these songs and think, Oh yeah, Will Butler songs or, or is this allow you to be, you know, musically something very, very different. I hope you hear it and you're like, Oh, this sounds like the band from stereophonic. That's the mm-hmm. dream, but we'll see. <laughs> but not the band Stereophonics, which is a different thing. Not the band entirely. Stereophonics, just the band that is in the play Stereophonic. <laughs> you don't sound like them, which is a great band, too. I like Stereophonics. But we'll get <laughs> them to play this. It'll be like a very meta thing at some point for the like 10th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great. Uh, I will ask about the new Arcade Fire uh, because um, I think about uh, the conversation you and I had a couple years ago. We were at Forecastle, and um, you guys were wrapping up the tour. And you said at that point, I think about this a lot, you, and you were quoting Springsteen again, which I now hear is uh, something that you like to do. It's, uh, <laughs> but you were saying, uh, now it's time for us to go away for five years and let everybody miss us. And, and that's probably the period that we've been in, right? I mean, this is the, 
learning to miss arcade fire moments uh, that that we're in. But but what is the update? Because the, it's not like you guys aren't doing anything. As I as I kind of get hints from here and there, like there's there's action happening. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, I mean, it always takes us a year, a year and a half to make a record. Like we tour until we're sick, and then we take a long time off. And then it takes us a year, year and a half to make a record. And it, it's it been a crazy year, but that schedule is not busted yet. Like we're making the record in a different way than we would have. And and if we can't physically get together, it'll be delayed and somehow. But I, I have to believe that we will be able to like get together safely and legally mm-hmm. <laughs> at some point. And then I actually think it'll, I think it'll happen. You never know. You, it's such a mysterious process. It's such a, you know, capturing a wild horse on the plains. Like you could just end up with like a broken leg and some broken ribs, or you could just have an amazing horse in like two weeks. Um, so yeah, it'll we'll we'll see. There's no like deadlines or anything, but w- kind of once we can get together, it'll I bet it'll happen pretty fast. Yeah, I'm really interested to hear what you guys come out with too, because I mean, Arcade Fire does tend to write these opus. Uh, thematically, and and considering everything that we've gone through, you know, since the last uh, record, like uh, I'm I'm really interested to see how that maybe possibly twists its way, you know, screws its way into uh, into whatever you guys are doing. So, yeah, we try to we try to let things grow from the soil that they grow in. So uh, yeah, it's we'll we'll see we'll see what weird weird uh, berries we get. <laughs> <laughs> There's the album title right there, Weird Berries. It's, it's not a great it's album like, title. No, it's like a little, it's like our jam period. It's like <laughs> weird berries. Anyway. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Will, uh, Generations, again, I know I've complimented it like a half dozen times here, but it's such a good record that you've done. And, and I was also a big fan of Policy uh, as well and, you know, in the Friday Night uh, Live album. So thanks for continuing to make this whole side of you oh possible and progressing thank you thanks so much yeah no problem it's been a pleasure talking to you uh hopefully uh there will be a time when we do hear these songs live i know there will be (laughs) there will be yeah someday (laughs) there will there will be blood Um, no wait there will be shows um yeah god willing sooner rather than later yeah right on man well thank you so much for the conversation today it's been a been a lot of fun as always yeah thank you thanks for having me